Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Youth in Focus Community. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight and joining us. We're really excited to have you here. We're really excited to have you join us live. We actually have some people here in the Youth in Focus studios tonight, and others will be joining us remotely. My name is Scott Carnes, and I'll serve as your Master of Ceremonies this evening. I'm thrilled to be returning for my third year to support this incredible event and this wonderful organization. You may have seen me live at the auction a couple of years ago at the 25th anniversary. Uh, I'm thrilled to be back and serve as your Master of Ceremonies this evening. Before we roll into our program, I wanna encourage everyone to participate this evening. We've got several ways for you to do so. The first is I wanna encourage you to open up and utilize the chat feature here in our presentation. We wanna know that you're here. Say hi, say hello to your fellow participants here tonight. We also have teaching artist Dane Ichimura in the chat to answer any questions that you have and keep that conversation going. I also wanna make sure that you are logged into the community and focus bidding page. This is gonna be the way that you can participate in the silent auction and in the raise the paddle in a little bit. We'll talk about both of those things in a few moments, but we wanna make sure that you have that open either on your phone or as a separate window in your uh, browser so that you can participate in those and still enjoy the program that we have for you. If you haven't yet registered to be able to bid and donate, you'll need to create an account. And we're posting in the chat right now instructions for doing so, so that you can be part of the silent auction and make your donations during the Raise the Paddle. Let's talk a little bit about that silent auction. We have some amazing items up for bid. As always, one of my favorite things about this event is the student artwork that we have. The wall behind me is full of some incredible images by our student artists, and we have some of their best shots framed for you to bid on tonight, professionally framed by our friends at Museum of Quality Framing. Thank you very much to them. We also have several great regional travel packages for those of you that are itching to get out of the house and travel around. And in these COVID times, who isn't itching to get out and travel around a little bit? We've also got a great spa basket package, as well as some local travel packages if you wanna get out but not venture too far away. We have also always popular Seahawks tickets. We've got some great wine packages in there and a lot more. So please get into that silent auction, make sure that you're getting your bids in. We will be closing that silent auction at 735. So you've got about a half hour left to get your bids in. Make sure that you're watching that bid and that you don't get outbid and lose that item that you really wanna have. We also have in our Raise the Paddle this evening, two wonderful matching opportunities. So I'd like to ask that you hold off on making your donations until that portion of our evening tonight so that we can really take full advantage of those matching opportunities. And I'll talk more about those when we get to that portion of our program for you. Speaking of our program, we have a very special celebration for you tonight. Even though we can't be together in the same room as we have in years past, we really want to celebrate all of you as members of the Youth and Focus community. Our theme tonight is focus on community, and we have several members of our community that we're going to listen to and hear from tonight. I'm thrilled to be able to interview several members of this incredible community and give you the opportunity to hear directly from their mouth why participation in this organization is so important to them and why this organization is so important to our community at large. To begin, I'm just about to switch places with Samantha Kelly, Executive Director of Youth and Focus, to welcome you. Samantha. Hello, everybody. Uh, good evening and welcome to our annual celebration for Youth in Focus. I'm Samantha Kelly, the very proud executive director for this amazing organization. After 19 months of social isol isolation and disruptions, endless Zooms, schooling and working from home, and everything else this pandemic has thrown at us, we've all lost a little bit of that sense of community. In fact, the last time I saw most of you was two years ago at our 25th anniversary celebration in 2019. So thank you, thank you for tuning in tonight and thank you for being part of our community. Tonight, I wanna share a personal story and reflection with you, provide some updates on what we've accomplished at Youth in Focus the last year and share some exciting projects on the horizon. 
I recently flew back to Texas to attend the funeral of my cousin and very first art mentor. Marcy, who was a master potter, provided early support and love and guidance to me during my elementary years and throughout my teens. She saw the artist in me and in her gracious way, she invited me into her studio to throw my very first pot. There in her presence, I found the healing and restorative power of art and the space Marcy provided me. I went from feeling like an outcast or worse, unworthy, to finding possibility and hope and love. She showed me that it was not only okay, but absolutely possible to pursue studies in to pursue studies and ultimately a career in the arts. As I gathered with family a few weeks ago to celebrate Marcy's life, I was transported back to that inaugural art moment and all that it embodied for me. After months and years of not seeing family, my cup was instantly filled with love and acceptance and wholeness and deep connection to not only my family, but to my art origin story. So what does this story have to do with Youth in Focus and why are we here tonight? I share this because after all of these months of not seeing our students, not being in their presence, I began to lose my own connection to the students, the staff, the partners, and the purpose of our work. I'm pleased to share that with the return to in-person classes, my recent visit to Texas, and being with all of you tonight, I am reinvigorated by the possibilities of art and the work that we do. And at the end of the day, our work is absolutely about people and the relationships that form as part of this creative community. And tonight, 40 years after my first art experience with Marcy, I am reminded of what an honor it is to mentor the next generation and pay it forward. Many of you here tonight know all about Youth in Focus and have been part of our larger community of support for years, and some of you are just now joining our community for the first time. So I want to give a little background. What is Youth in Focus and what is it that we do? Simply put, we unlock the potential of the next generation of creative thinkers. We provide after school, summer, and partner programs. We focus on social and, emer social and emotional learning, 21st century skill development, and technical photography and digital media skills. We teach students the tools and the confidence they need to succeed in education, life, and career. We believe that all youth should have equitable access to quality arts education, and we prioritize serving teens furthest from education justice. So why is this important? Washington State, as great as our state is, is the 45th lowest funded state for arts education in the nation, which means 70% of our Seattle high school students never take a visual arts class. I had a robust arts education and an early art mentor, and our students deserve the same. There is a massive need for high quality arts education pro programming like that provided by Youth in Focus. I wanna share some accomplishments from the last year. Since the last time we came together to celebrate, we launched the biggest program we've ever launched in Youth in Focus history, the Creative Career Cohort. CCC was the first program that for Youth in Focus was designed specifically for BIPOC students, actively incorporated career-connected learning to build uh, networks. It's our longest running program we've offered provided graduating learning over a six month period. And it was modeled after an internship and we actually paid each student to participate. We had a corporate business partner to ensure our students received actual job readiness preparation and studio photography experience. Huge shout out to our partners at Evo for helping bring this program to light. Tonight, you'll hear more about the profound impacts of this incredible program from two of the participating students, Brenda and Sabrian, and from teaching artist, Dane Ichimura. In addition, we hosted 25 virtual programs to hundreds of students. We offered free pay what you can classes and summer camp. We continued to invest in our commitment to inclusion, equity, and becoming an anti-racist organization. And we welcomed five amazing new board members. You'll meet two of them tonight, TJ and Robbie. Looking forward, some really exciting programs on the horizon. 12 of our students will have their photographs published in a new national publication called Among Peers, which features work from seven youth serving photography organizations across the country. 
We're excited to announce a recent partnership with Seattle Public Utilities to feature two student artworks on 150 new trash and recycling uh, containers across the city. Brenda Palma, who's with us tonight, and Ben Dong, who participated in 2019, will soon be featured around Capitol Hill, Georgetown, South Park, Hillman City, Little Saigon, and Alki. We're giving a whole new meaning to trash with our student artwork. We're working on a new strategic plan to center our efforts towards becoming an anti-racist organization. In fact, we need your help with that. We'll be reaching out with a survey to gather feedback on how we're perceived by our various communities. So be on the lookout for that in a few weeks. We're welcoming new staff, including Sheeta Bonokdar, our community engagement coordinator, who you'll meet tonight, new teaching artist, and a new education manager. And we're excited to launch the second year of the Creative Career Cohort for 2022. We've got lots of work to do and lots of paths to get there. The arts provide hope and possibility and connection for all of us. Our work matters and your support matters. Thank you so much for being part of our community and being here tonight. Oh, I think we're switching places. We're switching now. places. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We've got rolling chairs going back and forth tonight. So I would like to now bring on our first panelists. Please help me welcome two of our student artists, Brenda Palma. Palma, who you just heard is part of the uh, arts program for the trash and recycling bins, and Sabrian Thomas. Let's welcome them to the screen. Hello, Brenda. Hello. And Sabrian, welcome. Hey. So first, why don't you each tell us a little bit about your relationship to Youth in Focus and how you first got involved? Brenda, um, I came to know Youth in Focus through my school, giving me the opportunity to connect with Youth in Focus and to learn photography through the CCC program. I met many wonderful and skillful people while I was there, and I greatly enjoyed my experience. How about you, Brenda? Um, I was part of the, I got involved in, with Youth and Focus through the CCC program, which I was with Sabrian in it. It went from January to June of 2021. And I first applied to it because of the description of the program. I was interested in graphic design, so. Fantastic. Tell us a little bit about what the program was like on a daily basis. Um, well, being part of the CCC program each day reminded or was like you constantly get to see how everyone grows and progresses throughout the throughout each day. And it's really cool to see everyone's growth throughout the, the process and the whole time through January through to June. Did that was, hurt your experience, Brenda? Um, yeah, it was just it was very fun and you just you get to experiment with a lot of stuff and learn new things. And it's just, it's a really great environment. Just Tell me a little bit more about that. What did being involved mean to you and, and how did it change you? When I got involved, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. Could you repeat the question? Yeah. What did being part of the program mean to you and what changes did you see in yourself as a result of being part of it? It really just provided me with like a place where I could learn about photography and it really helped me. Well, I was intimidated by photography and the program really just helped me break that, you could say. Mm -hmm. I how motivated me to try out other things that I found intimidating. Fantastic. How about you, Sabrina? Um honestly it kind of like brought in my perspective about being in like programs like this and beyond that like I, I noticed more things that go into being a photographer more things that go into graphic designing and it's all like a working system not just yourself yeah absolutely so now that the program's done what are you both up to these days i am currently in college i am studying to to my major is graphic designing and currently seeing how that goes. <laughs> Excellent, pursuing the arts then, great. How about you? 
I am also in university. I'm taking an acting class and I joined a photography club. So. Oh, fantastic. Great. Well, to close out, um, why do you both think it's so important to provide art experiences to young people? Um, providing art experiences for young people to me is that it allows you, it allows for young people to express themselves, whether it be as a career or a hobby. Art is a great way to show self-expression and share yourself with the world. It is also a gateway for young people to potentially change or improve the world's future. How about you, Brenda? Just as Sabrian said, expressing yourself is very important. And I feel like art experiences, they really give you a voice and an outlet to learn about yourself and experiment. And it also provides you with tools. A lot of like art experiences provide you with tools. Youth in Focus gave me access to tools, which I probably wouldn't have had otherwise, like the laptop, the camera. And I think tools and the experience are just as important. So. Fantastic. So true. Having a voice and a means to broadcast it is so incredible. Thank you both for your time tonight. We really appreciate it. Next, I would like to welcome two of the uh, staff members from here at Youth in Focus. We're gonna do a little shuffle here because they're actually in studio. So I'm gonna move on over and they're gonna join me here on screen. Give me a second while they come in. So I'd like to welcome... <laughs> <laughs> We're all excited to be together in a room. Dan Ichimura. Howdy, everyone. Who's a teaching artist for Youth in Focus and also an AV technician at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, I understand. And uh, Sheeta Bachner, Bachnachdar, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I even practiced that. Uh, who is the community engagement coordinator. So let's start off a little bit and tell us, I just said what your role was, but what does that mean and, and what do you really do for the organization? Yeah, so I am the face behind all the emails y'all have been getting recently. So nice to meet all of y'all. Um, but yeah, part of it is um, connecting with all of y'all, connecting with our community, connecting with our students and seeing what our community needs, what our students need and how we can we just like resource share and um, be connected with one another and just build our sense of community and um, connectedness, especially after this year and a half. I think we all need that. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, Dane? What does it mean to be a teaching artist? Um, so being here at Youth in Focus has been awesome. Uh, my time at Youth in Focus was spent uh, doing the CCC. So I got the privilege of um, piloting that with Meg and Ronnie and Benji, um, best crew that I could have ever asked for to do that. And so, yeah, I got to teach the first session and then assist on the next two sessions. So. Fantastic. But tell us a little more about what keeps you engaged and continuing to work with this organization. Mm. Uh, what keeps me engaged is 100% the students. So being able to connect with them, like that was what I looked forward to every week was like hopping on with Brenda and Sabrian and like making really awful dad jokes <laughs> over Zoom. <laughs> and like, even though the cameras were off, I could feel the eye rolls on the blank screens and I just, <laughs> it made my heart sing. So um, what keeps me connected is the students. That's fantastic. Sheeta, um, you're out there talking to the community about this program all the time. Um, why do you think these programs are so important? Um, I mean, to echo what Sabrian and Brenda were sharing, it's so important for youth to have resources to be able to achieve whatever they want. You know, at young age, we tell, like, ask kids, like, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? And when they get older, like those, it seems like those options narrow, but I don't think that it should. I think that we should give them literally everything that they can desire because they are our future and they deserve literally everything to make our future better than what it is now. Absolutely, yeah. it's so true. Uh, Dane, why do you think providing arts experiences in particular are so important for young people? I think that is important because, so as a young, like creative in high school, you don't really, so me and Benji talked about this a lot when we were in class, but we would say like, you don't know what you don't know. And so being like a young creative in high school, you, you just don't know what's out there. So I think what Youth in Focus is offering is like opportunities and like, hey, there are like a million different avenues for you to take art or photography or photo retouching, whatever it is that you're learning. Um, there are real opportunities out there. So yeah, yeah. fantastic. If you would expand a little bit more on why you think it's so important to support youth 
today. It's, totally. it's so hard to be a young person these days, it seems. Yeah, I mean, there. I just see so much power, wisdom, creativity, mm -hmm. um, a drive for change in our youth that um, I think we should be completely supporting. Like, it's their future. Like, what do we as adults need to give them to be able to be as successful as possible? And I think that, like, photography is, like, a great way to be able to express themselves and through the arts in general. So I think that we should find ways that support youth to be able to explore every single avenue possible um, for themselves and their communities. Absolutely, so true. Well, I wanna thank you both for your work with this organization and everything you do for our students and for the community. It's, it's really incredible what you do. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your time tonight. All yeah. right, thank you thank all. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna do a little shuffle again. Yeah. Thanks so much. I'm going to welcome Samantha back now. Um, we would like to hear from one of our alumni, uh, Johnny Jefferson. Johnny was unfortunately unable to join us this evening, but Samantha received some incredible words from him that she wanted to share. Yeah, so a few weeks ago, we received an email from Johnny, and Johnny is the current CEA site lead at Interagency Academy, which is one of Seattle public schools. Um, schools. And so this is the email that we got from him. I'm reaching out in hopes to receive some support with a program that I would like to start with our students here at YEP. Located downtown in Seattle, it's part of Interagency Academy. Our students, majority of which are minorities, enroll into our schools from comprehensive sites within Seattle Public Schools for many reasons. Some are suspended or expelled, dropped out, or incarcerated and or on probation. They've slipped through the cracks at bigger schools that did not give them the attention they deserved. I am an alumni, not only of YEP, where I am employed now, I am also an alumni of Youth in Focus. My case manager in high school saw my creative potential and forced me to join Youth in Focus. I didn't want to. My young mind was telling me I had no place doing some white people activities. I can say now that Youth in Focus had a huge impact on me and I continue to take photos and teach others about the power of a picture. So is there any way that you all can help me start a small pilot program here at YEP? So I am delighted to share that after several conversations with Johnny and after the great COVID clean out that everybody has been doing, including Youth in Focus, we are going to be able to outfit the YEP uh, Interagency Academy with some darkroom equipment, um, with five enlargers and a lot of the equipment that they're gonna need to get started. We're also going to be able to provide um, not only uh, those physical resources, but also some advice and some assistance and some guidance to get them started and potentially do some more programming in the future. So I'm super sorry that Johnny couldn't be here with us in person, um, but this, complete full circle of him being a student um, and wanting to pay that back to the students he now works with is, is really what we're all about. So, so that's incredible. the message from Johnny. Wonderful. And I'm going to turn it back over to you, Scott. We're going to musical chairs out we're of here We're going to musical chairs. Okay. If you would take that one out of the way. That's oh, great. Okay. Here, I'll scooch this all one. right. Well, we have another incredible partner. YEP is, is of course, as uh, Samantha just said, a great partner that um, Youth and Focus has been working with. Launch is another great partner that we have in the community. And Launch is a community-based uh, organization here in Seattle that's focused on providing every child and community access to high-quality programs, things like preschool, before and after school programs, and summer le learning opportunities for children that are aged 3 to 12. Uh, one of our key partners with Launch is ECs Lara Fernandez, who also could not be with us this evening, but I had a chance to speak with her prior and ask her to record some words for us. I asked her to talk a little bit about the relationship that Launch has with Youth in Focus, um, what keeps her connected and engaged in this partnership, and really why supporting youth is so important today and why arts in particular are so important for youth. Let's hear from ECs. So in March of 2020, everything had shut down and Launch was very quick to pivot to offer free in-person childcare to essential workers while also planning to run in-person summer camp. It was important to us though, to keep our word of offering project-based learning, enrichment and social emotional learning activities that would help de-escalate from the trauma. 
in my search for partnership, Youth and Focus jumped out as an org that not only would complement our services, but was ready to go. Apart from all the chaos that was happening, they were just as focused and eager as we were to set a space for youth to have free range in expressing and affirming how they were and are still feeling. Their expertise on excel accelerating, excuse me, the next generation of creative thinkers to meet the emerging needs of this, you know, of a global society, that really speaks to what every youth development center is trying to accomplish. What kept me connected for the second round of summer camp, for example, was really that interdependence. What I mean that by that is we serve and are in family, in community with the same student body of youth. Um, if it takes a village to raise one child, think about how many networks you need uh, for a city of youth. We're two CBOs trying to co-parent the same kids. And having seen their work now for two years, their curriculum was thoughtful, their TAs were so engaged, and many of them reflected back our student population. Setting everything up with their educational manager, then Chris, um, was super easy. He was so responsive to our needs, our school age development, and um, our set themes at the time. The platform I remember for digital lessons were navigationally friendly, and it was effortless to incorporate, incorporate into our school age programming. Now, why all this is so critical and why providing arts experience is so important for young people is, well, are you kidding? Kids are born into and live within this confined space just dominated by adults. Add the COVID pandemic with all its disconnect and restrictions. And on top of that, picture yourself or picture a black and brown or brown student trying to navigate racial, cultural, and ethnic injustices Providing arts, creating, making, and leading an art practice then becomes a liberatory experience. Um, I personally support artistic expression among youth because it's a tool to freedom. And I think Youth in Focus really sees that. Thank you, Isis. Such true words and such an incredible partnership. To tell us a little bit more about the partnership with Launch, I'd like to now introduce Nathan Com. Cogman, who is also a partner with us at launch. He's a school age enrichment teacher. Let's welcome Nathan to the stage. Hi, Nathan. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing today? Good. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your role with both launch and your work with Youth in Focus? Um, so I am an enrichment teacher. Um, we, we do child care after school program, basically. And um, my connection with Youth in Focus is over the summer, we provide a longer day period for the kids and it was a given I was given the opportunity to go ahead and present them with the curriculum given to us by Youth in Focus that dealt with photography and going over some different skills and letting them explore the different art the, that art of that Youth in Focus has to offer so yes. Thank you. What was uh, some of the best parts about working with students that that really got you excited about working with them? working with students um I just love the creative side that they have to offer as far as like just you, you're always surprised at what they have to bring to the table year it's kind of unexpected but it's so exciting at the same time because I know when I was their age and what I was into and stuff like that and they come to the table with so much different and brighter ideas and you just like man that's so it's just it's, it's very exciting for me so I'm very connected when it comes to that that's great. Uh, what would you say to our uh, guests here tonight about why they should help support these programs and make a donation tonight? Well, I would say that there are some great and wonderful people running the show over at Youth and Focus. Um, I've known them for a short amount of time, very short amount of time, but um, being connected through the summer program and uh, a little bit during the school year or both of the summer summer programs that I've been working with launch. Um, they've been very supportive and I do feel that they deserve the opportunity to do much more and it is so much more to be done. Um, you guys are, they are so in tune with uh, the progression of the youth and the future. And I think that is very important, very much so important. Wonderful, I agree. Thank you so much for your time tonight. We really no appreciate problem. having you be part of this. Thank you. 
Before I introduce our final guests, I want to remind everyone that we have just a few minutes left on the silent auction that will be closing in just a few minutes. So this is the time to get back in there, make sure that you've got your final bids in and you're going to win those items that you want. After this next uh, set of guests, we will be closing that silent auction. With that said, I'd now like to introduce two really critical members of the Youth and Focus community. You heard earlier from Samantha that we have some new board members and two of them are here with us tonight. I'd like to welcome to the screen TJ Bell Davis, who's an educational consultant, and Ravi Bo, who's AVP branch manager at First Security Bank. Welcome, hi TJ. Hi Ravi, thank you both for hi, being Bob. here. Uh, let's start off with why is it important to you to be part of a nonprofit organization and why Youth and Focus in particular? Jay, you want to kick us off? Yes. Um, so honestly, I was looking for some sunshine. I mean, I was looking for something to um, be connected to the community in a way that made me feel good. And I really believe in the mission and vision of Youth and Focus, and I understand the value of visual arts education, and I wanted to be a part of it. So that's why I give my time to Youth and Focus. Great, thank you. Robbie, how about you? Yeah, you know, you always see or hear people say, um, be part of change or be part of change. So I really wanted to be involved and be a part of change. Um, so when a colleague of mine asked me to be on the board, um, I went on the website of uh, Youth and Focus, and it just brought me back to my early teens of 13, 14, when my friends and I would go skateboarding and take pictures um, or use a super old VHS video recorder and made a kung fu movie. And the happiness that we felt when we saw the outcome in the product itself, it just brought me back, and I just couldn't wait to join and be part of such a wonderful organization. That's fantastic. Uh, tell us a little bit about why you think these particular programs are so important for youth today. I mean, honestly, after all the years that I've spent in education, I learned that the most important thing was relationships and students being seen and having a direct connection to the community. So when I came across Youth in Focus, or even, it's just the opportunity to me, like to make me a better person so that, so that I can be a lifelong learner, but I felt the value of the program, if that makes any sense. It's something that I want my children to be a part of. It's something that I want um, more children to be a part of in the community so that they can see themselves in the world reflected the way they wanna be reflected, right? Art allows you to be the one to tell your story and command the attention of others who need to learn about you and your experiences. Absolutely, yeah. Bobby, how about you? Um, I just think every child should have the ability to explore their creativity um, and they shouldn't be restricted because of any tools or resources that prohibits them, prohibits them because of the you know, amount of money of the equipment itself. And you can focus provides those tools and resources um, and equipment and programs that anyone can attend depending on no matter what your economic status is. Um, you should be held back. Um, you should explore your creativity and see what uh, you can be um, as an adult. Great. Well, I know in addition to the time you give serving on the board, you're both financial supporters of the organization. So I'll ask you the same question that I asked Nathan. Why do you think our supporters tonight should make donations to support this work? I mean, I'll say that, honestly, it's an investment. I mean, I'll, I'll go with the donation piece, but I feel like um, it's an investment in the community. And after all the things that we've experienced and seen over the last couple of years in the world, like what better way to come back together and hit the ground running than giving to an organization that's worth your time? You know, like I've been involved in a lot of things over the years, but they don't all necessarily feel this way. They don't always necessarily live the mission and the vision. So if you're looking to become a part of something that's gonna change the future for youth and the adults involved. I was like, this is the organization that you need to invest in. Join me. Fantastic. Investing is a great word. Um, I invest my time and my hard earned money because I believe in youth and focus. I believe in the work that they do. I believe in our staff and I believe in the children's growth. Um, every student should be provided the resources needed for them to succeed. And that's the reason why I invest. Fantastic. Well, thank you both so much for the time and energy and money that you give to the organization and for being with us here tonight. It's been really great talking with you. Thank you.
Thanks. All right, we are going to close this silent auction. This is the last chance. A couple seconds left. That silent auction is going to close. We really want you now to focus on the raise the paddle. This is the portion of the evening where if you did not win something in that silent auction, you still have the opportunity to give. What you're giving is a direct donation to the organization. This is going to be where you go to that make a donation button on the website. But first, let me talk a little bit about what supporting the organization means and what your money means to the organization. You've heard so many incredible stories tonight. Uh, what support tonight through this Raise the Paddle means is that you help us cover the costs of youth participation in these programs and keeping it free for the students who participate. It helps keep the programs operating on a regular and consistent basis, and it helps us to build the future that we all want to see. We've heard repeatedly about the future and the impact of these programs on the future of our community, so you're really helping to support that. You're helping to build a future full of hope and opportunity, fueled by this generation of young artists. And as we heard from those young artists earlier, this program is about giving them a voice and having a mechanism to use that voice to make positive change in this world. So that is what you're supporting this evening. So are you ready for this? We have a $60,000 fundraising goal. We're gonna put up a thermometer that's gonna help us keep track of our progress here. As an added incentive this evening, we have two matching opportunities. I mentioned these earlier. We have a $7,000 match, and we would like to use that to receive 10 gifts at the $500 level and 20 gifts at the $100 level. So we're hoping that as you try to make that decision about what level is best for you to participate, that you'll think about that $500 level or that $100 level to help us really take advantage of that matching opportunity. We know that some of you want to give more and some of you want to give less, and that's great takes a village to support organizations like this and the young members of our community. And we've got a level that is gonna be appropriate for everyone. I would really love to see 100% participation tonight. We have a level that's right for everyone. Find that level and give what you can this evening. It's so appreciated. And again, really helps to build that future. Excited to see that thermometer start to go up. So make sure you're logged in and ready to give. I'm going to talk now about some suggested levels of giving and what impact they'll have on the organization. But again, we want you to come in at whatever level you feel is appropriate. So at the $5,000 level, you're going to help us purchase top quality cameras and tablets for a class. We want every student to have access to be able to participate regardless of their access to technology. So a gift at the $5,000 level helps us purchase that equipment and provide that to students in class so they all have equal access. I've seen $5,000 gift come in. Thank you so much. That's so generous. Love to see that coming in. Thank you so much. You can follow along the bottom there and see the incredible gifts coming in. The next level that I'm going to suggest to you is a $2,500 level. And a gift of $2,500 will allow you to help us hire professional photographers that work as teaching artists for a full eight week quarter. You heard from Dane earlier about his commitment to that work and how important the investment in our youth is. Supporting those professional artists to be able to come in and give real world professional experience to these students is super critical and a gift of $2,500 is gonna help us do that. Our next level is $1,000. The $1,000 level, you can support four scholarships for a week-long summer camp, or two students for the eight-week after-school program. This organization is committed to providing equitable access to arts education by making the programs free of charge, as we've heard. So your support at this level directly supports those scholarship programs and helps keep the program free for students and helps ensure that students like Brenda and Sabrian are able to participate without barriers. Now, our next level is that $500 level. This, again, is where we have a matching opportunity. If we can get 10 gifts at the $500 level, that will be matched with an additional $5,000. At this level, your gift will help pay a community assistant to mentor students and provide social and emotional support in our online programs. 
we really try to work with the whole student and providing a broad range of support beyond just the direct instruction that they're learning in the classes. And your gift at this level really helps support that and helps especially given this time with virtual communities. The extra work to make sure that these communities are coming together and feel supported is so critical. So if we can get 10 gifts, the $500 level, we're gonna see that $5,000 match. We'll check in on that match in a little bit. Let's now go to our next level, which is $250. Photography requires a lot of equipment and a lot of materials. And at the $250 level, you're gonna help us purchase photo paper and film for the darkroom classes. Youth in Focus is one of the only places in Seattle where youth can actually get hands-on experience in our real darkroom, printing photographs. This is a unique experience for youth that they can't get anywhere else or very few places. So your gift at this level is gonna help purchase a lot of those supplies that are needed so that they can continue to print the photographs, those like you see behind me on the wall and those that you bought in the silent auction. Now our next level is also a matching level. If I can get 20 gifts at the $100 level, we have a $2,000 match that's gonna come in and provide that extra level of support. A lot of these kids are coming after school uh, and haven't necessarily had time to take care of needs like nutrition. So at the $100 level, we provide snacks for students in their classes so that they can focus on the work in the class, not worried about being hungry or not having grabbed something after school. Uh, so snacks and nutritional help for students during class is so critical. And at the $100 level, you're gonna help us ensure that education justice is there for all students. Now, our final level that we're gonna suggest tonight is the $50 level. A gift at this level is just as meaningful as a $5,000 gift and just as important because getting students to class to participate is critical. The $50 level, you're helping support bus passes for students so that we can cover their transportation needs to get to the programming that you see and have heard about tonight. We want to remove all barriers to access. So that means not only providing the programs for free, as we said, it means providing some nutritional supplement for them, also getting them to class. So that gift at $50 helps with that transportation. Hopefully one of these levels has been one that you feel comfortable supporting. If not, if, there's, if you wanna give $25, if you wanted to give $2,750, but there wasn't a button for that, you find the custom button there as well. So you can give any donated amount that you'd like to see using that custom button. You can also give multiple times. So if you'd like to give $7,500, you can use the 5,000 button and the $2,500 button, or you can mix and match those with that custom button as well. Okay, I see that that thermometer is going up and up and up. I'm gonna do a little checking here and wanna check in on our total. We currently just broke the $20,000 level, which is absolutely incredible. And I see that still coming in. James Herndon using that custom button for $600, thank you. Uh, so let's check in on those matches. I'm gonna be looking this way because I've got some information coming from our production team here. Let's check in on that $5,000 match and the $2,000 match. Looks like we made both of those. So we have an additional $7,000. So I'm gonna ask Danny, who's our production person here to add that up. And we are now at the $27,210 level. Let's take a look at the silent auction. Wow, fantastic. We've done $8,765 in the silent auction. So we're gonna add that total here. Just a second, there we go. See that thermometer driving up, getting us closer and closer to our goal. We're just about at that $37,000 level. That's absolutely incredible. Now, we wanna acknowledge the support of our very, very generous community partners and our sponsors. At the gold level, we had April Roch with Vibrant Seattle and Windermere Real Estate Midtown. At our silver level of support this year, we had museum quality framing and Glazer's camera. 
At the bronze level, we had PK and Robert R Rodriguez Lawson. So at this point, I'd like to ask Danny to add in the value of our sponsor donations as well. And look at that, bringing us up to almost $45,000. That's absolutely incredible. Thank you, thank you so much community for your incredible support. I hope that hearing the stories of our community members tonight, whether they were students, staff, board members, community partners, alumni, there's so many people that come together to make the work of this organization happen every single day. And your support is so valued and so appreciated. Now, I did say we had a goal of 60,000. You'll see we're just now at about $45,000 mark, but the donation is going to be open until the end of next week. So we still have opportunity for you to continue to give. We also know that there were a number of people who wanted to be here tonight that couldn't be. So please spread the word to your friends and family. Tell them the incredible story of this organization. We know that this um, opportunity to donate will go out to our supporters who could not join us tonight. So at the end of the giving period, at the end of next week, we will send out information to update you on the total that we raised tonight. Thank you so much for getting us over that $45,000 mark tonight. It's so, so, so appreciated. I would now, for a final good night, like to bring back Samantha and a couple of the staff members to wish you a fabulous evening and to thank you all in person for being here. Come on in. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> we need chairs. <laughs> Thank you all so, so much. Um, we are three fourths of the way to our goal, and I know we can get there. Um, it means so much to be in community with you all tonight and to celebrate all of the amazing folks that make our community. Um, it's really good to be here with our staff in person, um, but we just wanna express our gratitude to you. Thank you for being with us tonight. We promised 45 minutes, we're gonna let you go. Um, share this with your friends, family. We've got another week to um, meet our goal. Thank you all so much from all of us at Youth in Focus. Have a great evening. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.